Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts prove acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Walking. Lately, it's something many of us have taken to doing with more enthusiasm than we've shown in years. Walking has become one of the few antidotes available to cabin fever, overeating, passive lifestyles, and radically narrowed options for being in the great outdoors. Even if we were regular walkers prior to six weeks ago, we've likely grown a new and deeper appreciation for this simple activity. That's what the two disciples are doing as our story opens this morning. Walking. And like most of us, while they walk, they talk. They're leaving Jerusalem. Likely, they're confused, maybe even a little bit angry, quite depressed and despondent. The one they had been following, who they thought was the Messiah, was crucified by the Romans. And then there was that whole hullabaloo this morning with Mary saying that she'd seen him alive. What to make of all of this? Their discussion was undoubtedly deep and contained many unanswered questions. In the Bible, walking isn't just an activity or a mode of transportation. Walking is also symbolic. There are dozens of instances in the Old and New Testament where walking is used as a metaphor to describe a certain course of action or conducting ourselves in a certain way. Micah asks, what does the Lord require of you to act justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with God? Paul tells the church in Colossae, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. The two on the, their way to Emmaus likely weren't thinking about their walk as being part of their journey with God, but that's what ended up happening. Two or more were gathered in his name, discussing events and wrestling with their doubts and questions. And who should arrive in the midst of this but Jesus? The Word. And the Word spends the rest of the journey unpacking the mysteries and intricacies of Scripture for them. That's a pretty strong image for us, isn't it? Our walk with Jesus forms us and grows us as disciples. As we spend time with the Word in Scripture, we're also spending time with the Word become flesh, who dwelt among us. And there's a second part to the story that's equally powerful. The shared meal, which is when the disciples finally recognize Jesus, he comes with them and breaks bread, echoing the Passover meal shared in the upper room, and they see him clearly for the first time in the entire story. Communion brings the reality of who they are traveling with to light. Pope Francis describes the story of traveling to Emmaus this way. The road to Emmaus thus becomes a symbol of our journey of faith. Scripture and the Eucharist are the indispensable elements for encountering the Lord. Life sometimes wounds us and we go away feeling sad toward our Emmaus, turning our backs on God's plan. We distance ourselves from God. But the liturgy of the word welcomes us. Jesus explains the scriptures to us and rekindles in our hearts the warmth of faith and hope. And in communion, he gives us strength. But they didn't recognize him earlier. And rather than that filling us with doubt, it can, in fact, fill us with joy. 
A kindergarten teacher was walking around her classroom while her students drew pictures. One little girl was scribbling so intently that the teacher asked what she was drawing. The little girl replied, I'm drawing a picture of Jesus. Oh, honey, the teacher said. Nobody really knows for sure what Jesus looked like. The little girl, without missing a beat, responded, They will when I'm done. Jesus' eventual revealing of himself to the two travelers is a reminder to us that it's not through anything we do or say that we come to believe, but through grace and the work of God as Holy Spirit within us. It's only once the disciples have both learned from the word and shared the bread and wine that they see Jesus for who he really is. And even then, it took divine revelation for them to believe. That was true of Peter, of Paul, of Thomas, of these disciples, and it's true for us. An insightful writer noted that we, like the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, have sorrows, confusion, disillusionment, and despair. It's our lot as fallen individuals living among other fallen individuals. This is very true, and perhaps now, under social restrictions, our sorrows and despairs have taken on new dimensions. We cannot hold funerals or visit the elderly in nursing homes or see our brother or sister in Christ who is in hospital. But the truth of Christ's presence with us in our confusion and our despair is also a reality. No matter what prohibitions are placed on worship in community, sharing bread and wine together in person, or seeing each other face to face, Christ comes to us through the words studied, meditated on, preached and prayed. Indeed, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ is present in live-streamed communion services and Zoom prayer groups, in parking lot meetings, virtual choirs, and drive through prayer times. Just as he was to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, Christ is being revealed to us in new and powerful ways. And for that, thanks be to God. Amen.